we are sitting inside a 2004, maybe 2005 Beetle. It's a BEW TDI engine. The customer's concern is they took some stuff apart, attempting a repair, decided they were in over their heads, and when they put it back together, they had no boost. I was over there driving, and uh, we're going to go graph boost, but first I'm going to, when I check trouble codes, I decided this might be video worthy, so uh, let's get the And there's five codes. Sensor reference voltage B, camshaft position sensor, engine coolant temperature sensor, signal too high, turbocharger boost control position sensor circuit, engine start blocked by immobilizer. I am going to go ahead and clear these codes. Uh, I've already saved them uh, in case we need to reference back to them, but we'll see which code we had a sensor reference voltage B code reoccur immediately, and we'll go drive this and see what uh, happens when we graph boost. Let me get a boost graph pulled up here. Measuring blocks, 11 for boost, and click the graph button. And this is rather unusual here. Um, I'm gonna turn off the RPM and turn off this uh, last field here. And you can see here our desired boost is down here, the green line, and our actual boost is up here, the red line. Um, these two should be relatively near each other. I don't know why this is like that. Uh, it might be in reference to our sensor voltage trouble code. I've already forgotten what the actual definition is, but uh, that uh, reference voltage trouble code may be that uh, the map sensor is unplugged, or maybe there is a... Uh, shorted to ground on that reference voltage. So we'll at least go drive it and see what happens and then we'll bring the car back in. Go ahead. Okay, so we've driven this and take, took and um, did a wide open throttle pull. We end up with here, the yellow line is boost actual and I, I don't know why it's up there. It should be following boost commanded and I think actually because it's up there, boost commanded is actually being affected by where it's at. Um, I took another graph, and I have it stored in paint here. And I hope you can see that okay, but the yellow line here uh, we were doing a wide open throttle pull and the uh, commanded backed off and the commanded went back up and the whole time actual stayed up here and then it dropped out and then it did some goofiness here and, and then it went back up and stayed at the top. Um, this makes me think something along the lines of a wire pinch. Maybe the reference voltage is shorted to ground and here it became ungrounded and kind of worked for just a minute and then it grounded again. We'll have to take a look underneath this car and see if there's any obvious problems with the wiring. Uh, as I said, the customer was working on it. He could have pinched a wire or something along those lines. We'll uh, rack the car and get back with you. Now, we've been graphing the map sensor. And the map sensor is located down in that area. Very difficult to get to on a Beetle. Much easier on a Jetta, but difficult to get to on a Beetle. Uh, so in order to check for problems there, we would have to take some stuff apart. Looks like we did a timing belt on this car. But um, here's the point. There's a common area that I know wiring is damaged on. Now this is a common area right here, and you've seen this in a previous video. Down in this area where the turbo actuator connects to the turbo actuator sensor, there's a uh, known problem there, and I want to inspect that first. Just with my experience, that's a definite problem area that could cause the reference voltage to short. So I'm going to go there first. And uh, I have to point out that if you're in a shop and the, somebody's left the um, tow hook in place, that your shins are going to feel it. Okay, the actuator on a BEW has what they, you generally refer to as a smart smart actuator and it has a sensor right here to sense the position of the actuator so that the computer can confirm that when it applies vacuum to it that the actuator actually moves. Now 
this is a real common area of wear and problems here for two reasons. One, the, fl the weight of this thing tends to make it uh, damage the wires, and the um, loom covering over here tends to eat, the inside of it has sharp edge and it tends to eat into the wires. Now, um, I'll open this up and see if I can find any problem there. Okay, I'm here editing this video and I found that I have uh, lost some footage. What I actually think happened is I forgot to push record. What you would have saw is me open up the harness and found the damage to the wiring. And for this video, that's kind of the aha moment of where we actually found the problem. So um, it sucks that I lost that piece of video. But what we found inside there was damage to the smart actuator sensor wires and the 5 volt reference wire was shorting to the other wires. Okay, back to the video. Okay, I've pulled this forward in order to get a better view from up here. And just like inside, you can see this wire is pretty bare and that wire is exposed. And that gives them the opportunity to short to each other just like it was doing inside here. And up here you can see the wire is chewed into by the sharp edges of the inner side of the loom cover. What we do to fix that is just tape this up with cloth electrical tape and of course the cloth doesn't have any sharp edges so it won't this damage won't get any worse and it won't short to each other. Of course we'll have to fix this right here when we uh, replace the connector um, because of the damage inside there. Okay, here's our repaired wiring harness after uh, Bob has soldered in a new connector there. And there it is all taped up. We will uh, plug this back in and move the heat, sh heat covering back on it, and that uh, should be a good repair. Okay, here's the first boost graph that I saved. Uh, this one, it takes quite a while for boost to start building up. And I think this happened because Bob was at too low of an RPM when he was doing the wide open throttle pull. He kind of bogged the motor down. He was at a speed where he probably should have been in first, but uh, he, he was doing a wide open throttle pull in second and he was going too slow. So it took a long time for the engine to build up enough speed to get uh, to make good boost. But uh, this here is good boost control. It over boosts for just a brief moment and then comes under control. And, and this is the point where Bob had to back out of the throttle. And let me show you the other boost graph. In this one, obviously, Boost came up much faster. He was at the right RPM for the gear he selected, and Boost overshot just a little bit, and then it came under control. Maybe a little slight rise there, but then, of course, we were going so fast we had to back out of the throttle. So this is good Boost control. Obviously, before, we had actual Boost stuck way up here, and the reasons it was stuck way up here, the reference voltage was shorted. Now, reference voltage is usually 5 volts, and okay, I feel like I didn't do a good job explaining the nature of the problem on this video. Uh, number one, we were graphing the MAP sensor, that is manifold pressure sensor, or manifold absolute pressure sensor, and that senses boost pressure. And our yellow line was real high, like stuck high, and but yet we found the problem on the turbo actuator position sensor and I want to explain how and why that fixed that. Now number one you have to understand what a sensor is. So usually a three wire sensor will look something like this. It'll have a power source, it'll have a ground, and it'll have a signal return. The power is usually 5 volts or it could be 12 volts or some cars may even use something different. I've seen a Jeep with it was 8 volts one time. So it uses this as the voltage to power. Why doesn't it just use 12 volts? Because 12 volts ain't always 12 volts. If you if this is when the car is uh, running, this is 14 volts. If this is when the car is off, it could be 12 volts, 12.6. If the battery is a little bit dead, it could be 12.0. Okay, so this, it needs a stable power source. So lots of times they run a lower voltage and that power source comes from the computer and there's a 5 volt regulator inside the computer. And then of course this is a ground, sometimes that's grounded inside the computer, sometimes it's just grounded to like a, a bolt or a stud on the manifold or something like that. And this of course is the signal return and that's what the computer actually looks at. 
So anytime you got a sensor problem, and I kind of went over this in my recent AC video. You should watch that video. It's one of my favorite videos. Um, the signal return is the one the computer looks at. And this is generally what it's going to look like. You have a computer and you have a 5 volt reference that's generated inside. Now in order to, and then that 5 volt reference is provided to the map sensor, to the actuator position sensor, and to other sensors also. So, so the map sensor gets its 5 volt reference from inside the computer. This would be the engine computer or whatever computer we're dealing with. And the 5 volt reference goes down to the map sensor but it also goes down to the actuator precision sensor because if they have this 5 volt regulator inside here making the 5 volts they don't want to have a new 5 volt regulator for every one that would make the computer bigger and more expensive so they just provide all the sensors and there might be some other sensors also with this same 5 volt reference so when here at the turbo actuator precision sensor you have your uh, power ground and signal return when the power wire shorts either to the ground or to the signal return it doesn't really matter then this 5 volts may not be 5 volts anymore maybe it's all the way down to 0.5 volts or maybe it's at 0 volts and what that does is it brings the whole 5 volt reference signal down to this sensor and to these other sensors also and that's why on the map sensor we had our yellow line at maximum. And I think that's actually what was happening. Uh, this was shorting to the ground wire over here. And that's bringing the whole 5 volt reference down. Therefore, this signal was that uh, couldn't show anything above 0 volts. And therefore, it showed a maxed out reading on the uh, graph. Uh, others, this could have affected other sensors, and honestly, if we'd have looked at some other sensors, we might have saw that same problem, but of course, we were diagnosing a boost problem and a lack of power problem, and that's why our shorted wires on the actuator position sensor caused a problem on the map sensor. Now, I drew this schematic this way on purpose with the sensor 5-volt references connecting in the wiring harness. I drew it that way on purpose, and some cars are like that but some cars are also like this the map sensor wire goes straight into the computer and the the 5 volt reference for the actuator position sensor goes straight into the computer and other sensors go straight into the computer and then inside the computer they are connected together and then they go to the 5 volt reference so whether or not these wires are connected on the outside doesn't matter because they the 5 volt references can connect on the inside if you like this video you learn anything from it be sure and click the like button and if you want to donate some money to the continued production of these videos you can find the donate icon on my website at www.kansascitytdi.com or also youtube has activated the super thanks button on my account and so what you if you want to donate that way look for a heart button with some money that says thanks and it shows support with super thanks and if you want to watch some more of my videos, there'll be one right there and one right there. And don't forget to subscribe right there. Thanks for watching.